Yeah, I'm fired up, man. Jesus is awesome. He's king. Come on, y'all. Um, you know, the Lord just put this on my heart real quick for everybody. Um, you know, obviously we know we're going to be celebrating the 4th of July tomorrow, right? So is there anybody in here who has served in our military in any capacity? If you could just stand for us, we just want to honor you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, you know, I, uh, you know, they say, you know, we live in the land of the free, but a lot of people paid their lives so we could be here. And uh, it's very important that we honor those. Um, you know, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, so <laughs> if you could hit that first slide for me. Um, and see, y'all don't know me. My name is Justin Farnbrook. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. How many people have here have heard me before? I think everybody, pretty much everybody. Okay, not everybody. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. There's quite a few people who have not heard of me before in my testimony. I won't go deep into it. Um, but just real quick, a little short, short version of my testimony. I won't be able to share the whole thing because it's very long. Jesus is very good. Uh, just the short version is I was really, really lost, and now I'm really, really found. <laughs> uh, I was a drug addict for 14 years. I lived my life addicted to drugs, didn't really know what to do, how to get out of it. But Jesus came. I surrendered my life to Christ in the middle of a parking lot. And I said, God, if you're real and you can do something with my life and you can use my life, then use it. I can't do this anymore. And uh, man, I tell you what, God showed up and showed out in my life. I've been drug free for four years now. Uh, I used to be a drug addict. Now I'm a Jesus addict. I used to be a, hey man, I used to be a, uh, you know, I used to be a drug dealer. Now I'm a hope dealer. So I know God, God allows me to travel. And um, so I got a picture here. The name of my ministry is Kingdom Fire Ministries. Um, I got a picture here. I don't know if you can see it. I probably should have made it bigger, but this was last year. We came up here and did a tent revival in the Sioux, if y'all remember. Man, it was awesome. We had a great time. That picture there is your awesome pastor on the right trying to figure out, get out of the way. We're both like, whoa, she came out of the, the, the waters just on fire. So we had an awesome tent revival. Uh, the name of my ministry is Kingdom Fire Ministries. We advance the kingdom and ignite a fire across the globe. Everywhere we go, I want people to get fired up for Jesus. And we want to advance the kingdom wherever we go. So that's my ministry. Um, you know, I've been doing it for a couple of years now, doing tent revivals. Uh, Brother Jeff Jerome and, uh, you know, a lot of people in this in this room today have been with us. And, you know, I appreciate you guys and, you know, all part of my journey. Y'all are part of my family. Uh, Pastor Scout and Davine, thank you for having me back again. You guys are awesome. Part of my family now. Um, so anyway, yes, if you could go to the next slide. OK, so this is my family. So y'all see I got a beautiful family and, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't have any of them. And so Jesus saved my life. When I gave my life to Christ in the middle of that parking lot, I was going to lose everything. I mean, I was going to get a divorce. I was going to lose my job. I was going to almost on the verge of committing suicide. I mean, all types of bad stuff was going to happen. But Jesus saved everything. And so my family travels with me. We do ministry together. Uh, We travel all over the state. We go wherever God sends us. We pray. God sends us out. We say, okay. Uh, My beautiful wife is with me here today in the front. Uh, Her name is Candace. And like I tell everybody everywhere I go, everybody sees Justin out here doing awesome things, doing tent revivals and street outreach. You know, we go out and do uh, street outreaches and we reach out to the homeless. And, um, you know, I let everybody know that everybody sees my face on Internet, social media, preaching. But my wife, without her, I wouldn't be able to do anything that I'm doing. Um, She had to go through the worst part of me. So now she gets to experience the best part of me. But if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. So if you could just honor my wife for me, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And my beautiful daughters, Peyton and Paisley, uh, they were here worshiping in the front, too. Uh, they're pretty tired from traveling quite a bit, but, uh, you know, they're beautiful as well. So I have a lot of girls in my family. Um, okay, so if you could hit the next slide for me. And this is the word that the Lord has given me for the church and for you all today. And, uh, you know, I on the way up here, I said this at the last church, too. And I think I'm pretty safe using this title. You know, coming through the UP, I'm like looking around. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to be okay using the title Make America Great Again. Flag after flag after flag after flag after flag. And I'm like, okay, you know, um, so, you know, making America a great again. Did y'all know America turns 246 this year? 246, which really in retrospect, if you think about it, it's really not that old. You know, if you think about it, America isn't really that old, but 246, we celebrate tomorrow. Um, Tomorrow is Independence Day. It marks the historic date in 1776 when the Declaration of Independence was approved by the Continental Congress. 
written by declaration, stated that the American colonies were tired of being ruled by Great Britain. They wanted to become their own country. So tomorrow, we're going to celebrate that. The Charters of Freedom were created on this day. The Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Yeah, we all, I think up here, we're, we're pretty familiar with, that, with those three things. Um, these three documents give us rights as citizens of the United States of America. Amen? That's a great thing, right? As citizens of the United States of America, we have rights, we have privileges, we have things that other, we're the greatest country in the world. I don't know if y'all knew that. We are literally the greatest country in the world. All, places from all over, they all want to come to be part of America. They want to be part here, you know? And I just, you know, I, uh, last time I was here, I remember saying some things to you guys. I remember saying that God is not done with America yet. Amen. Do y'all believe that? Oh, man, God is not done with this country yet, guys. This nation was founded one nation under God, and he's not done with it. The devil's been trying to mess around and doing some things, but there's some things that I find very, uh, that gives me hope for this country. Number one, prayer is being allowed back in schools. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, let's clap. Come on. That's a good thing. Come on. Coaches are now allowed to pray on the football field. Hallelujah. Things are happening, right? Not only that, Roe versus Wade was overturned. Come on, y'all. Amen. Come on. God is moving. Amen. We broke the covenant with death. There was a covenant with death over this land, and it was broken. It was overturned. Amen. Hey, man, I'm so happy for that. I love that laws are, things are taking place, things are happening. But the one thing that the Lord wanted me to share with you guys today is if this country is truly going to be great again, we have to figure out how to overturn the hearts of people. We can overturn laws, but there's a greater, deeper, what, why are people wanting to kill their babies? Why is this happening? Why? What is this? It's a spirit. You know, and like I, I love to go back to John the Baptist when John the Baptist said, we need to lay the ax to the root of the cause. So we can change the laws and that's great, but we have to figure out why are people wanting to do this? Like what is, what is behind it? And it's a spiritual issue. You know, we have to get people reconnected to God to understand what God, they, 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 the baby was formed in the womb, you know, and Jeremiah says, I, I knew you before I formed you. You know, so we have to, you know, get back to that. And really, this is, you know, I tell people this, like, I believe in my heart that this is just the beginning. Like, now that the law was overturned, this is literally just the beginning. Because I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. There's a lot of people that aren't happy. Probably here, too. I'm sure it's everywhere. People are not happy about this. But, hey, God is on the throne, you know, and he's still moving. And he's got a plan for America. And, you know, I find it very awesome that it, like, 50 years ago, right? I think it was 50 years ago. The year of Jubilee is the year that he just, that, that it got destroyed. Amen? And America is never going to be the same. I believe we're moving in the right direction. But we, as the church, as God's people, have a job to do. We have to get to the hearts of people so that way we can help them understand that, you know, what, what God's ways and his rules are. So if you guys have a Bible, if you could turn to Psalms 24, chapter 24, verse 6. And this is a verse that I want you to highlight it, underline it, star it, mark it, whatever you got to do. I want you to print it off, put it on your fridge. This is something the Lord gave me specifically for this church, but I believe also for even the church as well. And so if y'all are, if you could hit that slide for me. Yeah, it says, so I'm going to use the amplified version, but you, in your Bible, it'll do just as good. Um, whatever version you have. This is the generation of those who diligently seek him and require him as their greatest need, who seek your face, even as did Jacob. Now, America turns 246 this year. This is Psalms 24, 6. So it's very interesting. But we have to, we have to get serious with God. We, the church, all of us, we have to decide. We have to get serious with God. We're, we need to stop playing games and stop. No, we need to get on our face and seek what God wants to do with each and every one of our lives individually. Y'all agree? Amen. Yeah, amen. It's time. Like, because... Listen, we want to see change in this nation. And I don't believe it's a coincidence that God put us all here in 2022. I don't believe in coincidences. I just don't. I believe that he drew you all here today and you're sitting in the chair for a reason to hear. Not from me, but hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I believe this verse right here, put it on your fridge. Look at it every day. Seek his face every day. Christianity is not just a Sunday thing. We need to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday Christians, not just Sunday Christians, y'all. We, not, just Christ, not just Sunday only Christians. We need to be seeking his face every day. Amen? Amen. So I'm fired up. Sorry, I'm trying to try not to get super fired up. But uh, <laughs> appreciate that, man. So today, the Lord wants me to talk to you all about rights and privileges as Christians. So we all know that in America, we have rights and privileges, right? We have amazing rights and privileges that we 
you know, sometimes I believe we take for granted. Other countries, they, they're, like I said, they're dying to get here, literally dying to get here. And we have rights and privileges in America, just like we have rights and privileges in Christianity. And so how do we get to that? The Lord wants me to talk to you about that. Not only are we citizens of the United States, we're also citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Y'all believe that? Come on, man. I'm going to teach y'all today. Today is something the Lord has really put on my heart so strong because, you know, we understand that, you know, so we declared independence from Britain in 1776. Y'all know in the Garden of Eden, y'all know what happened in the Garden of Eden, right? Adam and Eve. Adam actually declared independence from his country. He declared independence by sinning against God. God gave him a commandment and said, do not eat of that tree. And he declared independence from God. And from that moment, when he sinned, he was separated from God. So he, you know, he, and then, you know, he, he, he disobeyed God. And now he lost some of his rights and privileges. But Jesus, right? But Jesus um, came back and he restored it all back to us. Um, if you could hit the next slide for me. So Jesus, in John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Y'all understand the kingdom is a country. The king, or heaven is a country. You know what I mean? Heaven is a place where, it, where you know, it, it's a place, right? So it's a country, just like America is a country. And in order to, be, to receive the rights in America, my daughter didn't have to do anything. She, all she had to do was be born, right? My daughter was born, and she received all the rights and citizenships of the country that she was from. And when we're born again, we're born into the kingdom of heaven. We're born into the kingdom of God. And once you're born again, you receive all the rights and privileges of being a Christian into this kingdom. And so, but the thing is, we need to know what are these rights and privileges? What are these rights and privileges that we have as Christians? And, you know, unless we get into our Bible and we understand what these rights and privileges are, we're not going to be able to uh, walk everything out that God wants us to walk out on the earth. You know, and so there's a lot of times in my heart, I believe that, um, you know, like sometimes it's, it's not, I don't believe that, uh, let me see if I can word this right. So we, we have rights and privileges in the kingdom of God that sometimes we are unaware of. And because we're unaware of them, we get taken advantage of by the devil. Or there's laws that are put into place. Like there's, God puts laws into place for our protection. Like I taught my daughter this one day. I was telling her, she's like, well, dad, you know, uh, why can't you go faster down the, down the road? And I said, because there's a speed limit. That's, and she thought that it was just because that, uh, you know, we, they just didn't want us to go faster. Well, really, that law is there for our protection. Y'all understand they put speed limits and things like that into places for our own protection. So God's laws and his commandments are literally for our protection. So if we step outside of the laws and the commandments of God, that's where we're, you know, we're, we are actually putting ourselves in harm's way. God didn't just make these sets of rules and say, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. You can do whatever you want. You can go outside the laws, but you will reap what you sow. You will go outside the laws of God and you will reap some of those the consequences for not staying within the law. You know what I'm saying? But that's the rights and privileges as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Um, the Bible says this um, in Colossians 1.13, that he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear son. Y'all know my ministry is called Kingdom Fire Ministries. I preach the kingdom, man, because it's all about the kingdom. In Matthew 24, 14, Jesus says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached until the ends of the world, and then the end shall come. So that's why we have to understand that what is this kingdom? You know, what is this kingdom? And so, you know, every time I come up here, I talk about the kingdom a little bit more. But it's so important, guys, that we understand it's the kingdom of heaven. It's a country that, that we're now born again into. It's a spiritual country. There's a kingdom that's around us. Even right now, there's a kingdom that's around us that we can't see. You know that? There's a spiritual dimension that's happening around us right now. There's angels around us. There's demons around us. Not in this church. Chase them all off, right? Crush their head. We just crushed every head. Amen. All the children just crushed the devil's head. But there's a spiritual dimension that's happening around us at all times. And so that's the kingdom that we entered into. Like we're living in the world, but we're not of the world, right? So we have to understand what are these laws and these principles in this kingdom so we can operate on the earth the way God wants us to operate. We can live the, the you know, who the sun sets free is free indeed, right? We want to live that freedom. We want to get into the, the benefits of the gospel of the kingdom. We want to understand who we are in Christ and all that. So we're going to talk about that. Um, if you could hit the next slide for me. You know, and one thing I want to say too is that the kingdom is not just about going to heaven one day after you die. Y'all understand that? That's a, that's a tough word for people sometimes, but I believe this is the truth. I believe this is absolute truth, is that it's about walking in the purpose and the power of heaven today while you're still living on the earth. If you're waiting for one day when you die, you get to go to heaven, then death is your savior and not Jesus. 
right? Your inheritance, this says, the Bible says we have an inheritance. Do you believe that? When do you receive your inheritance? On the earth, if my grandmother were to pass away, when, when do I get that inheritance? When I die? No, I get that when she dies. So Jesus already paid the price, right? Jesus already paid the price, and he's already given us our inheritance. It's up to us to receive it. But if my grandma left me the will, and she said, Justin, you got all this stuff, but I don't ever tuck at the, if I don't ever look at the will, if I don't know what the will says, then I'm never going to receive the benefits of what it is that she's provided for me, right? Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. So we're supposed to be living the resurrection life on the earth now. We can live these benefits now, when I was born again, listen, I talked to you about this last time, that my relationship, my eternal life started the minute that I gave my life to Christ in that parking lot. When I said, God, I can't do this no more. That's the moment that my eternal life started. All those benefits kicked in right there. When I surrendered my life to Christ, I was reconnected to God. I was reconnected to the source. I was reconnected to the creator of the universe. I received the Holy Spirit and all the benefits that comes with him. Amen. But I need what? But if I don't read my Bible, I'm not going to know what these benefits are. Right. So he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, and now we're into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. I'm living in a whole new world. People are like, Justin, you are wild. You are crazy. Yeah, because I'm, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Can you tell? <laughs> They're like, man, you're so, you're so wild. I'm like, listen, in, in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, the Bible says this, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you ain't got joy, you might be doing something wrong. Come on, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> We're supposed to be having fun. Christianity is about having fun, amen? And once you start to get some of these rights and these privileges and you start to understand this, this new system, this new way of doing things, Christianity does get fun. It's not about just sitting in a church on Sunday. It's about living the life Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, everywhere I go, amen? Because Christ in me is the hope of glory, right? Hallelujah, y'all. Oh, I'm getting fired up now. Okay, so <laughs> rights and privileges. Check this out. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. That's not what I said. That's what your Bible says. Amen? So then it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, so then you are no longer strangers or aliens. No longer. You are no longer strangers or aliens. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. See, the Bible's got this reoccurring thing. It's about citizenship. You know, and how we have to understand when we're citizens, we enter into a new country. We're, you know, we're representing heaven. Amen. Ain't that awesome? I love it, man. I love it. it gets me fired up. Um, a citizen is a person who, by place of birth, granted full rights and responsibilities as a member of a nation. Sometimes we take our rights and privileges for granted. So my daughters, Peyton and Paisley, you know, when they're really little, I'm teaching them right now in homeschool. I'm talking to them about the Constitution, talking to them about their rights and their privileges. They don't understand. They don't understand that they live in the best country in the whole world. They don't understand how it is to live in Uganda or how it is in Africa or how it is in China or how it is in Russia or Ukraine where they're going to war. They don't understand all the benefits. They're so little. They're, they just get to grow up in it. I have to teach them what their privileges are. I have to teach them what their rights are. I have to teach them everything you know, that they have and what the benefits are of living in this country. They don't actually know it. But once I start to teach them and start to show them, and they still don't quite get it yet. I don't even quite get it yet. To be honest, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still like, man, it's overwhelming to me to think about that God, you know, you should really just take a second and just thank God for even being here on this country, man. It's amazing. That's why July 4th is so important because we live in like no other country in the whole world. That's in the natural. Even now, now, take it one step farther. Now, come on, now take it one step farther and say, not only am I a citizen of the United States, I'm also a citizen of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. And heaven's got to be better than America. I mean, I'm saying America's pretty darn good. But heaven's got to be a lot better, right? Hundredfold, Hundredfold he said. Come on. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you could hit the next slide for me. So now I want you to know, so there's a couple points that I want you all to know. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I talk about it quite a bit, but identity is so important, guys. This is who you are. You are a citizen, but who are your rights? What are your privileges? First off, for you to understand your rights and privileges start to take them is you have to understand that you are a son of God. You are no longer a sinner. That sinner is dead and gone. Listen, I am not a sinner saved by grace. I am a new creation in Christ that the world has never even seen before. That sinner died in the parking lot. I'm not saying I never sinned. I'm not saying that I never sin, but I'm saying I don't identify as a sinner anymore because that guy's dead and gone. I'm not him. I'm a new creation resurrected with Christ. 
Come on, y'all. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Do you believe that you're a son of God? Can you say it with me? Say, I am a son of God. I am a son of God. Amen. So, and the um, females, if you're okay with saying son of God, I got to be the bride of Christ. You can be the son of God, okay? That, <laughs> you okay with that? I'll be the bride of Christ if you can be the son of God, just for the day. Is that okay? Amen. You're a son or a daughter. You're, you know, okay. So Galatians 3.26, for you are all the sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. That's not one day when you die. That's now. I became a son of God the minute I gave my life to Christ. I am born again of the spirit. Come on, y'all. I'm a spiritual being, y'all. I'm a son of God. I'm born of my father. I have a father above. I have a father. My heart cried out, I have a father. When I got on my knees, I said, God, I'm done doing this. I was born again a spiritual being. Hallelujah. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are new. All things are of God. So all, spiritually, my nature changed. My nature went from sinner to saint like that. Bible says in 1 Peter that we are partakers of the divine nature. Ooh, man. I'm a part. You, that's not just for Justin. Y'all look at Justin like Justin's wild. No, I just believe this stuff. I just believe this. I just believe that I am a partaker of the divine nature, y'all. I believe that the greater one is on the inside of me, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. The lion and the lamb has made his residency within me. Oh, my goodness, y'all. Isn't that awesome? That's for you, too. That's for all of us, guys. But it's, you know, we have to know what it is the Bible says, though our rights and our privileges are we won't understand. But the first step is understanding that you are a son of God. Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. First John 4, 17. Why? Because it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me because I'm a son of God now because, beloved, now we are the sons of God. You know, over and over in the Bible, it's got this reoccurring thing. I just choose to agree with it. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, if you get the next one for me. I'm just going to try to slow down a little bit, guys. I get fired up, man. This stuff gets me going, y'all, right? Man, so in the kingdom of heaven, you are a king. And you are a priest. You have authority and a relationship. In Revelations chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Now, this is what your Bible says now. This is red letters. So I'm just going to let you all know. You could read it for yourself. You can read it on the screen too. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings on the earth. That word prince can also be translated ruler. So Jesus is the rulers of the kings on the earth. Who are these kings on the earth that he's rulers of? Us. We praise the king of kings, right? Who is this king that he's the kings of? He's the king, but who is the, who is the kings that he's the kings of? That's us. We are not only sons, but we're also kings, meaning we have authority on the earth. We have the authority. Jesus said in Matthew 28, behold, I give you the authority to go, therefore, in the authority that I've given you, right? That's what Jesus said. He's saying, we have made, I have made you kings and priests unto my God. And, and Revelation 1, 6, he has made us both kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So what he's saying here is that, that, now listen, it's a different type of king. This kingdom is a different type of king. I don't rule over people. I do not rule people. Listen, we do not fight flesh and blood. If you go back to Genesis 1, 26, he gave man dominion over the earth. Everything that creeps, everything that crawls. The one thing he left out of there was man. We are not to have dominion over each other. Kings, real kings in the kingdom that know who they are in Christ, they will serve. Dominion in the kingdom looks like servanthood. So I'm called to serve other kings. We're all kings in this kingdom. We're all equally kings in this kingdom. We're called to serve each other and to go out into the world and serve the world and help the world understand who God is, right? And the priestly side of that is the relationship side. I have a relationship with God. So the priest is the spiritual side. The king is the earthly side. We're made to reign and rule on the earth. That's the kingdom. <laughs> That's the gospel of the kingdom, y'all. God wants you to live in, in the victorious life now. Not just one day when you die. He wants you to live it now. How do you do that? It's understanding your rights and privileges. First, you got to know your identity. Then you got to know your authority. And it's through a relationship. Without that relationship, you're not going to know how to rule and reign the correct way. Because there's a lot of kings out there. If you know, even in the world, there's a lot of kings that... Like, um, you know, for example, Russia, they want more land. They want more. They want control. They're always looking for power and control. So what do they do? They bomb other countries. They don't care about people. All they want is the control and the dominion. But they don't understand the spiritual side. They don't got the priest side. They might have the king side, but they don't have the priest side. That's why that's so important. The relationship piece is so important, guys. You know, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever's believe in him should not perish. 
John 17, 3, Jesus defines what eternal life is, is a relationship with the Father. That is eternal life. So the eternal life started that moment. You know, Justin's never going to die. You've heard me say this before. That's why I'm fired up. I'm, I, my body's going to return to the earth, but Justin's going to go back to be with Jesus. Amen? And then one day my body's going to come back at the resurrection. I'm going to get my body back, a glorified body. Amen? Come on, y'all. That's revival. <laughs> That's what I call revival right there. Uh, so in the Old Covenant, if, if you remember in the Bible, the Old Covenant, there was one priest once a year. They would go in to the temple and they would go into the holiest of holies, and then they would talk to God, one person. And then that one priest, that priest would come out of the temple, and he would be all, a lot of Moses, in Moses' time, his face was glowing. His face was glowing with the glory of God. Moses came out and blessed the people, right? That's what happened. Well, in the new covenant, right? What happens in the new covenant? Where's the temple? Oh, our bodies are the temple? Oh, okay, so God's made us kings and priests, so we're the priests that we can have a relationship with God every day. We don't got to rely on somebody to go in and talk to us for God. No, we can talk to God every day. We get to go into the holiest of holies, which is inside of us, amen. That's, that's Jesus who's inside of us, having a relationship with the Father. When y'all, hey, y'all, you guys think that I'm wild, right? I, already, I cannot feel it. But I, I do this every day. I talk to God every single day. This morning, I was spending time with God for two hours before I got here. I do this every single day. I spend time in the holiest of holies with my father alone. When none of y'all are looking, I go to the secret place. And we all should be doing that. Because I hear the voice of God. I'm like, God, okay, what do you want me to do today? Where do you want me to go today? What souls can I touch today? How can I advance your kingdom today, Lord? Because I know I'm a king. I get my orders from the priest, which is me, <laughs> which is the Holy Spirit in me. And then I operate in the dominion that he's given me on earth, which is, again, to serve. So I hear God for the priest side, and then I operate in the king side on the earth. So I can start to do what God's called me to do on the earth. I can affect people's lives. I go out and evangelizing. I'm an evangelist. I love talking to people. I love sharing my faith with people. I have never seen the joy that springs up within me when I talk to people about Jesus. Man, you, don't, you have no idea how many people I've talked to that just need to hear talk. I go on the street corners of Saginaw, and I go out there with a sign. I'll stay on the street corner of Saginaw, this, a sign that says, Jesus loves you. And that's it. I just, God tells me to do it. I do it. Like, okay, God, I hear from God. God says, go to this street corner. Go to there with a sign. Okay, I go there with a sign. I go there. People pull in. They pull in for prayer. And they're pulling in for prayer in the middle of the, you know, we go into the hard parts of Saginaw where they need Jesus the most. I mean, not the most. Everywhere needs Jesus. But we go right where the, the darkest spots are because I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world, right? So wherever it's dark, it's just waiting for you to show up and shine the light that's in you. And I'm not saying that I'm Jesus. I'm saying he lives in me. Amen. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll be out there on the street corner and I'll be praying and, and I'll just be like, God, just out there with the, and worship music and we'll be out there. And all of a sudden the car will pull in. Uh, a couple months ago, we had a guy, well, last summer, I should say, we had a guy pull in that was on his way to go commit a serious crime because he was going to retaliate against somebody else. That what he, he, he came in, he seen the sign that said, Jesus loves you. And then another sign, a brother in Christ said, pull over for prayer. This guy pulls in and he says, he says, I need prayer right now. I'm on my way to go retaliate against the guy and I'm going to do something I really don't want to do. I was like, wow, that is powerful. That is, and God sent me there. God sent me there in that corner. I was able to pray for him. The guy broke down in tears, gave his life to Christ right there in the parking lot. That's the power of hearing, hearing the priestly side and operating in the kingly side. You see, I'm not operating over people. I'm out there to be a blessing to people. Amen. Wow, man, it's so powerful. And the joy that you get when you understand that God uses you, when you feel when God uses you to touch somebody else and bless somebody else, it's like a feeling you'll never get. But you have to know, again, you know, I'm, God, I, you got to understand these, these couple principles so that way you can start operating. I want you all to operate in it because I believe my heart. Listen, everyone, we're called to be world changers. Every one of us are called to change the world. <laughs> Do you believe that? You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's Jesus in you. It's not you. You're working with Jesus. We're co-laborers with Christ. Amen? But listen, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Do you believe that? Come on, y'all. Those are promises. Those are, those are in our Constitution, which we're going to talk about. The Bible, listen, we have the Constitution in America. We have the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. We have all them. What is the Constitution of the Kingdom of Heaven? It's your Bible. God has given us the laws. He's given us everything. But if we don't know the, our rights and our privileges, you know, come on, y'all. Okay. This gets me fired up, guys, because it's so important that we get into our word. It's so important that we know what God says about us. God's never going to change his mind. You know what I love about the Bible? I'll read it. Three years from now, it said the exact same thing. 
20 years from now, it's going to read the exact same thing. 50 years from now, that Bible is going to say the exact same thing. 200 years from now, two, God doesn't change his mind. But it's up to us to change our mind to align with what God wants to do. Amen? It's his laws and his privileges, you know? Okay, so if you could hit one more slide for me. Responsibility. So we have identity. First, you're a son of God. Okay, second, you have a relationship with God, and you have authority. So you have identity, authority, relationship, but then this is one that most of us don't like, but this is the truth that we all need to get. We have a responsibility as Christians. <laughs> we have a responsibility to be going out and doing and being. It says, be the salt, be the light, be the leaven. Jesus said that over and over. He told that to his followers that we need to be going out because, listen, the world is dying. The world is dying and they're looking for hope, guys. And they're finding it in drugs. They're finding it in a lot of things that ain't Jesus. But the Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory. So we have to be going out and giving the people the hope that lies within us, y'all. That's how we're going to change the world. That's how America will continue to be the greatest nation on the earth. That's how these things are happening. Listen, the intercessors cleared the way 50 years ago. They were praying and praying and praying to get this law overturned, to break this covenant of death over our nation. And it's here now. It's here now. We're in the beginning of seeing the greatest awakening this, this nation has ever seen and the world. We're going to see it, man. I'm telling you, we are going to see it because the sons and daughters of God are going to start to take their rightful place. We're going to start hearing the voice of God as our priestly, and we're also going to start to operate in the kingly on the earth side. Amen? We're going to see it, y'all. I'm telling you. We, and you're part of it. Every one of us, we're part of it. I said this last, if you're breathing, there's a reason. So I don't care how old you are or how young you are. God's got a plan and a purpose for you. God said in Jeremiah 29 11 that I know the plans and purposes that I have for you, a hope and a future, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. Amen. That's one of his laws. That's one of his principles. In the kingdom of God, that's one of his principles that I'm just going to choose to, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm still breathing. There's a reason. So, God, you must have a hope and a future for me. Amen. Hallelujah, y'all. So in 2 Corinthians 5.20, it says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Everybody say, I'm an ambassador. Amen. For now, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. See, and, and if you keep going in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I love 17 through 20. I love it. It's one of my favorite verses. I say it everywhere I go, and I don't mind repeating it because it's so important for us to know. But God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So everything Justin does out on the streets, when I'm out witnessing, it's all to get people connected back to God. Everything is to reconnect people back to the Father because once they get reconnected to the Father, once they get reconnected to the source, once they get reconnected to the Holy Spirit, they'll actually start to go out and be and do everything that God wants for them too because God loves them too, even the sinners. Y'all know that? Y'all know that even though God doesn't know the sin, like even though they might not know it, God's still got a plan for every person that you come across. Every person you come across is eternal. They're going one place or the other and I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to reach as many people as I can to make sure they know that, hey, listen, there's a better way. There's a better way. And the thing is, too, is like the thing is for me, like I go out on the streets and I love witnessing. And I, I, I just believe, you know, I said this last time that your place of pain is your place of rain. Meaning whatever the devil tried to, whatever the devil put you through, he, God gives you a grace in that area to go speak life into that same area. So I go into the drug addicts. I go into the homeless. I go into the worst of the worst because I can see the gold that God's put in there. Thank God he didn't give up on me. Thank God he did not give up on Justin, even though I was a drug addict for 14 years. Thank God. But I, it took somebody to come around and start speaking life into me and start saying, hey, listen, God's got a different plan for your life. You know, and start, I had people praying for me when I was 15 years old. I found out later. I had my grandmother and, and all types of people praying for me. I found out afterwards. But thank God for those people. We need people that can see the gold in people rather than the dirt. We need to start seeing the gold in other people in the world because that's we need to start calling out their purpose, calling out their destiny. Romans 4, 17 says, call things that are not as though they are. So I just start talking to these people that are addicts, and I'm like, listen, man, God created you so much better than that. There's a better way. You don't need to go through them drugs. You don't need to go on the streets. You don't need to sell drugs. Listen, I, God, will, God will clean you up and use you. If God can use a 14-year drug addict like me, you better believe he can use anybody. Like He'll use anybody. It's up to the surrendered life. How much do you want to give your life to Christ? How much are you going to surrender to him? And I'm talking, he wants the whole thing. God don't like to share space, y'all. I don't know who this is for today, but God don't like to share space. He wants the whole thing. He's a jealous God. He don't want you to have idols in your life and have things in your life. He wants to go, he wants you to go all out for him. Because listen, the whole world, listen, I believe in my heart that the whole world is waiting to see the burning Holy Spirit. They're waiting to see people on fire for Jesus that really love Jesus with their whole heart, y'all. And you can do that. You don't have to be a preacher. 
You don't have to come up here in a pulpit because, again, if we were all pulpit preachers, there would be nobody to preach to. You can go out and be the best school teacher that you've been called to be. You can be the maybe you're called to government. Maybe you're called to go and, and, and run for office. We need born again Christians in the government. We need born again Christians in our education system. We need born again Christians in our schools, in our family. Whatever it is that God's called you to do, go and be the best that you can be. Amen? Man. Okay, so anyway, we're ambassadors. Let me get back on track here. <laughs> so we are ambassadors for Christ. Listen, I love ambassadorship. So I'm going to give you guys a couple things that really got me fired up. And it's going to get you guys fired up because you're an ambassador. We just said it, right? Bible says it. We believe it. So number one, ambassadors represent the country that they are sent from, heaven, right? And they do not represent themselves. Galatians 2.20 says, it is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's part of me now. That's part of my, that's part of my heart now. That's the truth, you know? And so the thing is, is that um, we have to represent what God says. And so number two, ambassadors have no opinions of their own. So if I, if, if so there are, there's an ambassador in the United States of America. Do y'all know that? There really is an ambassador of the United States. And he's sent to other countries. And he's sent to represent the country of the United States. So if this ambassador goes to China, let's say the ambassador of the United States goes over to China, that ambassador cannot go to China and say, hey, I think you should do this and this. That's a big no-no. The ambassador has to speak what the country says. He has no opinion of his own. Y'all understand that? And isn't it interesting that God uses the same word ambassador in the Bible, and then we're still using that same word today? We're called as ambassadors. We are not supposed to have opinions of our own. And again, I'm still working on that. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm there yet. I'm just saying that that's what we're supposed to. We're supposed to be, because listen, we're only supposed to speak what the Bible says. So people say, Justin, well, what about, what do you think about homosexuality? Well, Justin doesn't have an opinion about homosexuality, but let me tell you what my constitution says. Let me tell you what my country says about it. Oh, it's a sin. Sorry. Well, what do you think about drinking and alcohol and marijuana and all these things? Okay, well, let me check in my constitution in, in uh, section, you know, I believe it's section Peter, subsection Chapter three, you know, verse nine says that we should be sober and watch out for the devil because he's our adversary and we need to be sober minded. So it's not about what I, it's what the Bible says, y'all. It's not about me. It's about the constitution that God has given us in the word of God. So we have to get into this word to understand what it says so we can let other people know not what we think, but what God says, because we're ambassadors sent from another country. We're in the world, but not of the world, right? So we're in this country, but we're not from this country. We're from another place, y'all. <laughs> we're from heaven. Yeah, we're seated with Christ in heavenly places, right? We have dual citizenship in heaven and on earth. Amen? Oh, man. Ambassadors only speak the government's official position. Know the Constitution. So I have to know what the Constitution says in order for me to speak it out. Ambassadors are completely financed by the country that sends them. Hallelujah. That's for us. That's for all of us. That's the truth. Ambassadors of the United States of America, they don't pay for none of their stuff. The government sends and pays for all their stuff. That's the same thing. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's what the Bible says. That's not what I said. That's what the Bible says. That's what Scripture says. Amen? So we're financed by the kingdom. If you're seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness, he's going to back you up everything you do. Wow, man, that's ambassadors are protected by the government that sends them. So if they're over in China and China attacks the ambassador, the whole country of the United States is all out war against that country. Why? Because the ambassador doesn't represent himself. He represents the country that he's sent from. You don't represent your, we're supposed to represent the country of heaven. And where's, what's heaven's army? The angels, right? We got angels. We have all types. We have God behind us. If God could be for us, who could be against us? No weapon from it against us shall prosper, right? We need to start speaking these promises out, amen? We, you remember Elijah and the story of Elijah when he went out and, and he said, man, I wish they would open their eyes. And then he opened their eyes and there was an army of angels around us. Come on, y'all. That's our protection. That's our protection. That's God's. That's heaven's protection for us, amen? Wow. Ambassadors have access to all the assets of the homeland in the country. These are facts about ambassadors, guys. These are facts about us, and we need to start grabbing them and taking a hold of them and knowing what the Bible says so we can start to access and start to be everything God's called us to be, as rights and privileges as the citizens of the kingdom of God. Come on, y'all. 
<laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying? We're in the world, but not of the world. People are like, Justin, you're crazy. Listen, Justin, that's radical. Man, it's time to be radical for Jesus, y'all. Radical times calls for radical Christianity. It's time to put down the Sunday only thing and start living this thing every day and start to actually get into our Bibles every day. What does it say? What does my Bible say? What does God say about me? Because he's not going to change his mind. He'll never change his mind about what he says about you. You have to change your mind about what he says about you so that way you can operate and do everything he's called you to do. Amen? So ambassador's job description. What is it? So we know that we've been restored as a son of God, right? We're sons of God. We're kings and we're priests, and now we are literally an ambassador for Christ. We're in the army of God, y'all. We're, I'm here. To, listen, the Son of God was manifest for this reason, to destroy the works of the devil, and the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. He lives in you. He lives in us. We should be doing the same things, y'all. So like healing the sick, casting out devils, raising the dead, all that stuff is great. Also, but listen, Fear is a work of the devil. Anxiety is a work of the devil. Depression is a work of the devil. All these things are works of the devil. And listen, it's running rampant. But the sons of God are, I'm telling you, it's happening, guys. It's coming. The sons of God are waking up. We're going to start casting this stuff out. No, let me tell you about this Jesus. Let me tell you about the hope that lies within me. So that way you don't got to be a drug addict no more, right? Oh, my goodness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10 says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On where? On earth as it is in heaven. Heaven, right? That's the kingship. We're operating as kings and priests. Jesus is the door. I love what Jesus is the doorway. Y'all remember that in the Bible? Jesus is the door, right? And, 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 and he, he told his disciples that you're going to see angels ascending and descending through the Son of Man, right? Okay, where does he live now? Where does Jesus live now? So where's the door now? Come on. The doorway from heaven to earth is through you. It's through Christ in you. It's through us. Amen. We can release it. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We can release it everywhere we go. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, long-suffering. All of that is in the Holy Spirit. That's all within you, y'all. The power of the Holy Spirit, too. Baptism of the Holy Spirit comes power. I ain't got time to go there today. But y'all know you got power, too. You, can, you already heard my message before. We can do all them things, just like the kids are doing it. They don't got a junior Holy Spirit. They got the same Holy Spirit that we got, y'all, and they can do all the same things. This weekend, we were in Deckerville. We were spending a four-day tent revival in Deckerville, and I'm going to share a testimony in a minute here, but I want to share with you guys, my daughter is 10 years old. We're teaching her this stuff, man. We're teaching her. You have the same spirit, just like y'all are teaching her in the church. Y'all are doing it too, and I'm just saying, like, she goes out, and I have her lay hands. This weekend, a guy who was praying to God, but listen, here's the power of going out and being everything God called you to be. This guy was praying to God, asking God. He didn't know if healing's real. I don't know if healing's for today. I'm not sure. He was praying about it. And so he, his daughter, in the middle of the event, his, her daughter got a severe migraine headache. I mean, it was the point where she was bawling, crying, crying, crying. He comes up to me. He says, Justin, I know you believe in healing. I said, okay, yeah, come on. I'll pray for her. So I put my hands on her and started to heal for her. I started to pray for her. She didn't get healed right away. And a word of knowledge came to me, go get your daughter. And I said, okay. I, I sent Candace. I said, go get Peyton. So Peyton came over. Peyton laid hands on his daughter, instantly healed. Instantly, the headache was gone. The guy starts bawling. He loses it. He says, oh, my goodness. I knew that God healed, but I didn't know it was through us. I'm like, man, I started to share with him the same message I'm sharing with you guys, that we have the Christ in us, the hope of glory, the Holy Spirit. We can release him. We just got to believe God. You believe through God all things are possible. You believe you got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Listen, even Peyton, my daughter that's 10, she's laying hands on the sick and seeing it. Amen? That's awesome because that's destroying the works of the devil, y'all. And listen, not only that, then his anxiety and his fear got dispelled. You know, I mean, it's like, it's awesome when you start living this kingdom. It's called the kingdom life. It's a lifestyle. It's not just an event. It's a lifestyle. Like we go out and be everywhere we go at the gas stations, at Kroger's, at Myers, at wherever it is that you're at. You can listen. I believe that people are praying and asking God for things. God, I wish you would just show up in my life. God, just show me that you're real. Show me that you're real. You are the answer to somebody's prayer. You all know that? You're the answer to somebody's prayer. You can show up in the midst of wherever you're at and then say, reach out and say, can I pray for you about something? You know how many times I've seen that? You know how many people have broke down crying saying, Justin, I can't believe you literally, why would you come and pray for me? I was just praying, asking God for a sign and you showed up and asked me to pray. Boom, that's reconnecting them back to God. You know what I mean? I'm praying for them and they're like, wow, you're, I'm an answer to somebody's prayer. And that's not just for me. That's for the whole, all of us. Can you imagine if the whole... <laughs> Can you imagine if all of us in the United States start to just go out and be everything God calls us to be? 
Can you imagine if we just went out and just started praying for people and started sharing Jesus with people? We could see revival in this nation. We get it wrapped up real quick. That's what's going to happen. We're going to get this thing wrapped up because the sons and daughters of God are going to start coming. We're going to save as many souls as we can. Jesus is going to return. I don't know when he's going to return. We don't know when. But all I know is today is closer than yesterday. We got a job to do. We have responsibility. We have to go out because people, again, they're going one place to the other. Amen. All right. So, <laughs> all right. One more slide. So you are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You have rights and privileges. You are a son or daughter of God. Identify with what the word says about you, not with the world. Identify with the word, not the world. Amen. You are a king or queen and a priest. You have authority to reign and rule on the earth through a relationship, and you are an ambassador. You have responsibility. Y'all believe that? That's not what I, that's what your Bible says, y'all. That's not what I said. That's what the Bible says. People ask me, how do you get so fired up for Jesus? How are you, how are you doing everything you're doing? I just agree with what this says. I'm just agreeing with it. Amen. Romans 8, 19 says, for the whole world is eagerly awaiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Y'all are a son of God, right? The whole world's waiting for you to show up. They're waiting for you to show up in your family, in your job, in wherever it is that God's called you to be. God's waiting for you to go out and be everything that God called you to be. But we have to decide to agree with it and start to walk in it. Amen. And that's how we're going to see revival in this nation. I believe it. I believe in my heart. Bible says Colossians 127, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Listen, it's time to make America great again, guys. But in order to do that, the people, us, we have to start manifesting. We have to start being. We have to start doing. We have to start, you know, being everything that God said we could be, man. Y'all believe we can do that? <laughs> Advance God's kingdom everywhere we go. We got to kick down the gates of hell, y'all. What do gates do? Gates stand, right? Gates keep people out. They're just standing. The sons of God have to go and kick the gates down and advance the kingdom. So that's depression, anxiety, sickness, disease. We have to kick that down so we can keep moving forward and advance his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That's what Jesus said to do, right? Man, let's, let's turn the culture of this world into the culture of the kingdom of heaven. It's time for us to take our rightful place as kings and queens. You are royalty. Do you believe that? You are royalty. Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Come on, y'all. That's what the Bible says. Again, this is all scripture, guys. I'm giving you guys all scripture. I know it's kind of radical. This is kind of a radical message, right? But we have to be doing it, y'all. It's time. And listen, I'm gonna, you got that testimony video? I got four minute video. Can y'all hang with me four more minutes? I want to share with you guys a testimony video of what happened this weekend in Deckerville. Um, I was out there just doing a tent revival, just going, because I hear from God. God says to go, I go. I don't care. And so there's a testimony video from a doctor. This lady was a doctor for 13 years. I had to shorten the video because I don't want it to be, you know, like super long. But this, she's been, she was a doctor for 13 years, didn't believe in healing. I want to show you guys what God did at this tent revival this last weekend. The Lord, the Lord said, no, there's a work to be done in Deckerville. Um, not just being a doctor to the community. In two years, my practice is over 850 people, and that's by the grace of God, because I didn't know that we were, there were that many people around, but um, Deckerville's really it's, small. it's been wonderful, um, but something that's been on my heart, so as a doctor, I have to be able to explain things. It has to make sense to me, because I have to explain it to you. When you come to me, you have a problem, an ailment. I have to be able to pull from my knowledge, pull from the evidence, put it together, and explain to you what's going on or why I think that's what's going on. Um, that took years of training, 13 years of training. Um, God has put in my heart over the last few months his ability to heal. And it's something that I've struggled with because it's hard to understand is it genuine when people are laying their hands on someone and calling for healing. It, I don't. It's not that I don't believe that God can heal, because I certainly believe that. I see it in my in my patients all the time, but through me, through somebody else, it's been something that He's been opening my eyes to, and I've been trying to study it and understand it. And I have prayed, Lord, if that's something that is meant for me, or that I should understand more, please make it clear to me. Um, well, yesterday happened. Some of you may have been here and witnessed an event that happened 
right back there. I got here from work, a very stressful day as usual. I'm just trying to be happy that I'm done with work. And I go and get my food and I sit down and I just hear a panicked call from my husband. He just screams out my name and I look up and he looks at the small ghost. Okay, that's what you know, your heart starts pounding, you know, something bad is happening. So I go back there and here's this woman slumped over on the bench, on the table. And everyone's, you know, she, she had a heat stroke, she passed out, she passed out, okay? So I'm sitting there looking at her and I get into doctor mode, right? There's a bad situation, something's happening, she's not well, what's going on? So I'm assessing her and she's agonal breathing. What's agonal breathing? That's where you're kind of snorting or grunting or groaning and you're not taking real breaths. So we have agonal breathing, that's bad. Um, she's not responsive to vigorous stimuli. People are yelling her name, shaking her, and she's not waking up to that. She's not making any sort of effort, um, any contact. So then I do noxious stimuli. Take your finger like this and put it in the middle of your chest and rub your chest. That hurts. And you don't have to do it very hard for that to hurt. I was jamming my hand into her chest external rubbing her in no response. So of course, okay, check a pulse. I try to feel a pulse on her wrist. I feel no pulse. I just her for a pulse in her neck. I feel no pulse. And as I'm watching her, her lips go from pink to purple to white, and I, we have to do CPR. Not once in my mind did I think I need to pray over her, but thank the Lord for Justin, because he came out of nowhere, this angel, and just over her praise, in the name of Jesus, you will live, in the name of Jesus, you will be healed. And I'm sitting here thinking, where is EMS? And we're going to do CPR, and we're not going to do it in her throat, and she's going to be at the hospital. Um, so we're getting her down from the, the table to put her on the ground for CPR, and she's her head pops up. And I'm like, God, I'm kidding. And her eyes open. And I said, what is your name? And she tells me her name, and she tells me where she is, and she asks for water. And I'm like, <laughs> seriously, I have no way to explain that. In all of my training, the things I've seen, that, that woman should have been in the hospital. The EMS comes, and she's just like, no, I'm good. <laughs> Only by the grace of God. And they <laughs> So that's, that's it for the testimony. I mean, again, you know, guys, God wants to make himself known through you. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus. It's all glory back to God. It has nothing to do with me. Like they, you know, whatever. I was there. I was the vessel that he was working through. That's it. I was just the vessel. But God wants to make himself known through you on the earth. People are answered. You are an answered prayer to somebody. Now, who knows what would have happened if I wouldn't have been there at the right moment at the right time? You know, I don't know. But all I know is that God is good, and I just go and believe God for, you know, these things, man. I believe he's on the inside of me. He's Jehovah Rapha, you know. I mean, he, he's the God of miracles. He's the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I just want you guys to fulfill everything that God's got for you on the earth, man. Like, you know, we all have plans and purposes. And my heart to this message was really just to help you understand some rights that you have in the kingdom and that we're living in it now, you know, and that, that, that God loves you guys so much. He loves you so much, man. And he, he just wants you to know, you know, how much that he wants to use you if you're available. If you're available, he will use you and he wants to use you in this city. He's not done with this city. He's not done with your life. If you're breathing, there's a reason, remember? He's not done with you. Let's believe God today, okay? Well, hey, I love you guys. Thanks for allowing me to come share my heart. That's all. Man.